And, and there's also some uh, settings that you can uh, set. Like if I click, click member settings here, uh, I can uh, change my name, email, cell phone. I can um, put a, a photo in here. You can talk about yourself. You can do your, uh, what you want to show or not show for email. You know, so other people can either see or not see your email address. Uh, you can change your passwords, which only you can do. Um, so this is all under the uh, settings uh, there. Um, account settings has a little bit different information, um, mailing address and so on. Uh, but if you, you won't be able to, if you try to register for an event, you won't be able to do that unless you're logged in. So when you go to the website to log in to look at a calendar or RSVP, you have to make sure your name is up there. Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to register. Um, there's a lot of interesting things here under the pages link uh, on the home page. Um, uh, down here, uh, you click your, you can see your calendar and then you can scroll through for different months and so on. Um, we, we don't have the dinner reservation system any longer, as you know, but um, we have uh, some of the old events under our newsletter. Uh, you can take a look at um, diff a lot of different information that's been posted here for you to review uh, pictures of different events and stuff like that. This is all under our newsletter. <clears throat> to make any payments, you can pay your dues here on this link. It links to PayPal right here. Um, that's under the payments link. Under Mercedes Photos, there's different links to various activities that we've had. Um, here's an application uh, to uh, to mail in if new members can fill that out. The, uh, the villages or the club release form is here, different activities here. Um, and there's a classified section. You want to uh, list something uh, for sale. I see I have something there. I have to delete it. <laughs> uh, but there's a few things here for sale. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I think Mike's got some information on logos, which we might be changing, I guess, if we're going to become a part of the big club. Um, you can link any pet pictures. We don't have any there. I, I spent some time uh, putting some interesting links uh, that I found interesting under links, the links tab here. Uh, for example, this first one, you can download uh, owner's manuals for many, many uh, different years uh, and on different types of cars. So it's pretty cool. I mean, you can download a PDF. Uh, whoops, I closed my window. Um, I'm gonna go back there, hold on. Hit the wrong button. Um, here we go. Um, yeah, there's different links here for different things. Um, owner's manuals, videos of different things, how to replace the key fob. Um, I think a lot of really cool videos in here. Um, I'm going to be posting some other things, but I, I like to update the, these things. Auto brochures was really interesting. Um, this one, uh, like for example, I, this is a place where you can almost get any brochure, auto brochure from any of these car companies. And here's a bunch of Mercedes ones, you know, like so if you want to, a 2015, you know, AMG, a 2020 AMG, uh, GT, there's the brochure on it. 
you can take a look at it, you know, download it. And uh, that's a pretty cool website. Um, I, I found that on um, a Mercedes blog, right? So you can download, you know, official brochures of all different new cars. You know, if you want to have some fun, can't sleep in the middle of the night, you can look at this kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but but that, that's one of the links on here. It's, it's called uh, Auto Brochures down here. That's pretty cool. And this is a, a nice link here, this Mercedes VIN decoder. Um, you just type in a VIN and it will, it'll show you all the uh, options on your car. Uh, and it only works on Mercedes. It's called the it's VIN decoder. Sheet. Is it's that on the AMG site? Uh, I'm you get not, to that. I it'll, be, it'll, it'll work on AMG VIN numbers. Um, oh, but is, is that, did you get this from the AMG? Um, oh, this is on my, our website here. Uh, under, oh, cool. Uh, under links, right here on the, uh, on the under pages, under links. Yeah. Uh, I, I listed all these things here, and it's, a Mercedes, it's the third one from the bottom, Mercedes VIN decoder. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so that's a pretty cool one. Did, did you have, I see you just logged in, Bill. Did you see the brochures link here that I just showed? I, I think you were just doing that before. Okay. That, so uh, that one, you know, you just bought one. What year was yours? I got a 2018. Oh, so they don't, they may not, oh, 2018. Oh, this might be it here, right? Uh, AMG GTC? Yeah. Oh, GTC. Roadster. Okay, so maybe it's part of this one. It is. Um, no. Let me see. We we maybe, don't. Uh, yeah, this one on, I just it? downloaded. It might be. It might be on here. Um, yeah, there it is. There, I think. Yeah. Well, you, there's the brochure that Mercedes had. Pretty cool stuff there. Um, but that link is right on our on our links page right here. Awesome. That's really great. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that's done. There's, a, yeah, uh, there's another website called um, Maroni Label. Have you seen that one? No, what is that one? Uh, that one is, um, let's see if I can find it. Um, oh, it's at they can hear it. You don't know if they're hearing it because they have the he's got the control of what's on. Yeah, this is a pretty cool um, website here. For I think it's for <laughs> nine for ten bucks. You can um, you can get a reproduction of uh, of your window sticker, and you just type the type in the uh, information here, and I think it's nine ninety five or something. Um, Cool. It's not an exact replica of, mm -hmm. of the window sticker, but it does list all the standard equipment and all the options and the price and the retail price of your car when it, when the sticker was sold. Right? So, so that's I, I should put a link to that on there too. Um, so, do uh, you want to start the meet? You want to take over? Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm going to take over. I'm going to uh, share my screen and hopefully, of course, during the time I wasn't, yeah. I got intrigued on what you were doing. It didn't start up the uh, the right PowerPoint deck. Okay. 13. Those are some pretty awesome links. Thanks. Oh, there's the baby in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sitting outside, Greg? No. Uh, Zoom has a feature where you can put a picture from your computer as your background. So uh, oh. I'm sitting at my desk in my office. Oh, okay. Uh, I can change that picture. <laughs> You're a uh, lot better looking than the guy standing by the car. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was going to tell you, get rid of that guy by your car. He's going to give uh, your car uh, command <laughs> for an ass on. That's my twin brother, Mike, Mike Rod said. That's my twin brother. Okay, so we're going to officially start the meeting. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming. It, it looks like we've got about uh, 15 or 16 people on. I, I no, lost count. It's Douglas uh, Slick. I'm gonna run. It's not Dominic. Let's see. It's Douglas Slick. Uh, that, that's Peter Martin. You managed to find your microphone. Now would be a good time to... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now we know Peter. not to say anything bad about you. Right, because I'm kidding, you know. Mike, can you uh, put everybody on the song at one time? Can I do what? Put everybody on the screen at one time. Um, yeah, okay. you get, you, it depends on what your view is, because uh, I've got the, the view of, of my screen on. But up at the top, there's uh, a, a gallery view. Go to gallery view, and on the right side, there's a there's a looks like a tic tac toe board with nine nine boxes of it. Okay, and, I don't uh, see that. I'm yeah. It only shows six at a time, and then in the lower right corner of that box, it brings up another six. Okay. So, for instance, now I'm looking at uh, the gym. He's on a beach in Hawaii. <laughs> oh, that's uh, actually and, Chapman, Chapman's that beach was, in uh, uh, right, South right. Africa. Doug Sleek on, on this day, and Ken Myers, who hasn't turned on his camera yet. Okay. It says on the top that I'm viewing Mike's, Mike's screen. I don't understand that. That, that, that means you're, you're, you're viewing uh, my uh, uh, screen. So we got some new, some new members. Uh, I'd like you to introduce yourself, if you would. Tell us what, what kind of car, you, what kind of Mercedes you have, and uh, what, what's your involvement in with the brand. Um, Mr. Owner, who hasn't changed his name. <laughs> Go ahead. I go by Mr. Owner for now, but for many other years, it's Charlie Schuckel, and I just joined the club last month. Uh, I have a 2002 uh, SLK. Uh, AMG and uh, looking forward to see what I can uh, learn from you fellas and uh, share that information. Good to be with you. Good, thanks. Welcome. And uh, is, is that you, Bill, with, with, with the Zen pad? <laughs> no. Which Bill? <laughs> Bill Krasner. Yeah. Yellow shirt. Okay. Uh, uh, who else is new? Yeah, we got someone else new. You got two people out there without a picture. Right. I, I'm one of them. <laughs> okay, you're Pete. Yes. <laughs> I see. Okay. Pete or Peter or AU. Okay, what about Ken Myers? Has his speaker off or something? Yeah, he, he's been on for a while. Uh, I've sent him some text messages to turn on his camera. He, he hasn't done so. Oh, okay, because I see a cross through something. I was just wondering. Try non video. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay, so no other new members on. Uh, Ken Myers, now's your chance to introduce yourself. Going once, twice, three times. Next. Uh, the team on the board of directors, uh, I'm Mike Roth, I'm the president. Uh, Paul Sojin, say hi, Paul, wave your hand. Hi. I love everyone. Good, we see you waving your hand. The, uh, the, the software in Zoom preference to the per people who are talking. Oh, well, uh, hi. How's oh, that? Is that working? Good. That's yes. good. That's good. I know I saw you there. Okay. Okay. She's here. She's on the other side of the room. The camera's not facing her. Uh, dinner, dinner reservations are usually handled by Dolores, who's not on the meeting since she didn't want to be. Uh, 
accused of being computer literate. Uh, and uh, Greg Banji is our newsletter director. Uh, everyone met him. Uh, hospitality, Greta, that's an open position, looking for a, a volunteer. Photography is done by Dolores and Jim. Jim, raise your hand or say something. He's, he's the guy on the beach. Al Rubin's technical. Al, raise your hand. I raised my hand, but I'm, I, I can't, I don't know if anybody can see it. <laughs> I can see it. Yeah. I see all my fingers up. Yeah. Okay. I don't see my screen. You see, I, I got you completely. I'm not sure how this oh. works. Oh. Uh, well, it's another two hour seminar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seems I'm doing that two hours. Uh, Steve Herrera is not with us today. Uh, he, he, he had to go. He was called into work. He, he's in a vital industry, apparently. Uh, he got into the uh, medical marijuana field. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, our club in the news. Uh, I got called by uh, uh, Sherry Connor, the, rep the reporter from the Daily uh, covers uh, our clubs and car news. And had a long conversation with her. She'll probably put a story in about our, our Zoom meeting. Uh, so that's the logo on the shirt. That's the logo that's behind me. Uh, it's now available on license plates. Uh, the fellow who uh, did the license plates that looked like this, okay, moved to Delaware. So now that the license plates are more expensive, they're $18 plus $5 postage. We have one of the original license plates left. Am I right about that, Paul? Uh, that's correct. Do you have it on? I don't have it with me. I think, I think it's in that box that uh, Kate brings to the meetings. Uh, we're selling that particular one with the uh, yellow background with black lettering for $10. Um, okay. What is this? Uh, uh, website demo that was done at order. Is there anything to show the guys about the website, Greg? Had a register in, uh, for an event on the calendar? Uh, there's a, there's a new, um, you want me to show you? Yeah, I'm going to stop this year. You share your screen. So, um, uh, we, what we've decided to do is, uh, for new people, um, we tried to simplify it so uh, you can see what we're asking people to do first before they register, before they try to register on the website. We want you to print out the application that's in the um, <clears throat> downloads and application section uh, and then mail it in and then once it's approved then you'll you get be notified to register on the website so that's what uh the procedure is now is that what you want me to talk about Ed? uh no let's, let's go to a calendar event are you, are you logged in now let's go to a calendar oh, event and see if you can register for You know, this month's cars and coffee will probably be canceled. But. Well, you had a pretty good idea earlier to do a virtual one. Yeah, well, if you're if you're interested in doing the virtual one, uh, at the end of the meeting, uh, send me an email. The virtual one will be again at the same time Saturday morning, eight to nine a.m. Have a cup of coffee, put your car out on the driveway in the sunlight. And uh, we'll each walk around our car and comment about it. <laughs> yeah, there, are, there are smartphone applications for Zoom. Uh, it's not as robust as the desktop version, but for cars and coffee, it'll probably work pretty good. Yeah, it looks like, Bill, you're sitting in the garage where you have a picture of your car behind you. I got into the garage. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Uh, I'm gone. There it is. Yeah, we see the car. <laughs> That's the new one. Go 
Oh, it got a lot of space around it. You can have a back mic. Okay, and uh, let me uh, share the screen again. What is that, Bill? What kind of car? Uh, the it's the GTC. Okay, uh, is that the one I've seen? I think. Yeah, your head's in front of it. I can't see it that well. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've seen that. That's beautiful. Yeah, I got rid of the S, and now okay. we have the GTC. No, I haven't seen that one. That's very nice. Thank you. Okay. Go race uh, now. Car membership. <laughs> Yeah, you'll beat me anyhow. I don't know. Yeah, you know, Bill, Greg bought the same car that you had, I think, uh, except he bought a black one. I see it in the background there. It's looking good. Yeah, it's a beauty. I got rid of my other two and bought one. Well, you can only drive one at a time, right? That's right. I have to say... Un I, unlike I, some people we know. <laughs> I... I took advantage of the current situation with dealers that are really hungry and I emailed three dealers, three or four dealers with a proposal and Mercedes of South Orlando brought the car up to me, appraised my two cars. Of course, their first offer was ridiculous. It was like, yeah, we'll take your cars plus 19,000. I said, no thanks. And then they sweetened it for 5,000. I said, no thanks. Three hours later, the manager calls me up and says, we'll, we'll accept your offer, so. <laughs> Good going. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got mine from uh, Augusta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. came, came, came down with 751 miles on it. Wow, that's all? So Bill, current membership. Uh, my best estimate is uh, 198. Our, our newest members joined yesterday, Thomas and Patricia Watson, who I believe are neighbors of Paul's. That's correct. So that's where we yeah. stand. As far as I can tell, just under 200. Wow. Okay. Well, that was my guess at 200 plus. Okay, Paul, if you want to give us a, 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 a quick update. On um, what, financial or what? Yeah, we, we, we have the IRS uh, 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 501C7. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And uh, what our current You're fading is. out. You're fading out. Uh, you want the financial? What is our, our current uh, balance? Okay. Yeah, just a, uh, uh, okay, the uh, bank, account, bank account is $1,565.19. We got $40 in the cash receipts account, $40. That's That'll be transferred back into the bank account when I make a deposit. PayPal account, we maintain a $100 balance in it. A progressive donation fund account has got $434 in it. Okay. So, with checking and count and everything, it's two thousand one hundred thirty-nine dollars. But as you know, two of those is restricted, like the PayPal count and progressive donation count. Okay. And uh, future events that we have planned. Uh, Roll rallies uh, are halted until we get uh, a, a higher level of interest. We didn't have a high turnout at the road rally that we ran. Total recon over in Leesburg, uh, because of the current situation, we decided to roll that back to June or July. Uh, other activities that we have in a planning stage, as soon as the uh, recreation entertainment department comes back online they have promised us a, a car show at lake sumter landing uh dates to be determined uh we do have a, a date for the uh rotary polo barbecue on october saturday october 17th at the uh, private polo fields we should get a quick nice turnout of that and uh, with that uh jim 
Uh, I've got the PowerPoint deck on here. You want to start talking and just 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 give me a, a thumbs up every time you want to. Uh, uh, want me to change slides. my title page. I don't. <laughs> well, I, I put your title, you, you, your slides onto our background. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, I'm going to tell you uh, some stories about John Cooper Fitch who uh, I was lucky enough to be able to hang out with for about the last 15 years of his long life. Uh, slide one. John Cooper Fitch was a direct descendant of the John Fitch that invented the steamboat and uh, is memorialized here in this plaque in the uh, Inventors Hall of Fame. Uh, he was born in Indianapolis, and uh, his stepfather was the president of the Stutz Motor Car Company that was uh, heavily involved in racing from its very beginnings. Uh, he grew up in that environment. He attended military school, and he studied civil engineering at Lehigh University in Pennsylvania. I don't know how you start out as a sailor in landlocked Indianapolis, Indiana, but he became a very avid sailor. And he, uh, once he got out of school, he just kind of dropped out and sailed all over Florida and all over the Caribbean. Now we come to the, the really good part. This is Flying Officer John Fitch. In World War II, he flew first the A-20 Havoc bomber, then he switched over to P-51 Mustangs. And he was one of the tiny handful of propeller pilots that actually shot down a German Messerschmitt Me-262, which was the world's first operational jet fighter. It had two jet engines on it, and he shot one of them down. Two months before the end of the war, he was shot down while strafing a Nazi train and spent the rest of the war in a POW camp. After the war, he settled in Palm Beach, Florida and hobnobbed with Orville Wright, Noel Coward, and lots of the Kennedys. He actually dated Kathleen Kennedy for a while. Okay. So this is his first effort. He opened an MG car dealership and also began racing an MGTC at tracks like Bridgehampton, Thompson, and Watkins Glen. In 1950, Fitch raced the Jaguar XK120 in the Sebring Grand Prix of Endurance six hour. In 1951, he won the Grand Premio de Eva Peron in his Allard Cadillac J2. The trophy and a kiss were given by Evita Peron herself. Fitch then opened a Mercedes-Benz dealership in White Plains, New York, and began racing an MG Roadster on Long Island. 1951, he went on to win 12 of 13 races in the United States. He soon gained the support of Briggs Cunningham. He drove a Cunningham at the 24 Hours of Le Mans and scored a number of victories at road courses like Elkhart Lake and Watkins Glen, and was crowned the first SCCA national sports car champion. 1952, he raced another Cunningham at Le Mans, and later on a factory sunbeam in the Alpine Rally. Okay. Then Mercedes-Benz's chief engineer, Rudolf Ohlenhout, offered Fitch the opportunity to test the 300 SLR at Nürburgring. Ohlenhout was impressed. Fitch persuaded racing boss Alfred Neubauer to send a team of 300 SLs to Mexico for the Carrera, Carrera Panamericana, a race that the German team wasn't even going to enter because they had already won the points championship by racing and winning all over Europe. He joined the Mercedes-Benz factory team, the first and still the only American driver ever to race for the Mercedes-Benz factory team. 
Okay, this next series of photos is from the 1952 Carrera Panamericana. Fitch, Herman Lang, and Carl Kling went to Mexico with two coupes for the Germans and a new roadster for Fitch. Kling and Lang finished first and second, putting Mercedes-Benz back on the map in North America. Fitch, running third, was disqualified by officials for making illegal repairs to his car. And there was a huge controversy. The factory people went crazy, but the Mexicans wouldn't budge. The, the, the factory people believed that he was well within the rules of the event to uh, do some minor work. And they said, no, no, that's not it. So he finished a disputed third, and then he was disqualified. So you can go on to the next one, I think, Mike. This is, when you think about racing today and racing in 1952, this was a pit stop for a tire change and driver refreshment. There's one guy working on the car. The next. Now this is, this is a color shot of John Fitch with his old helmet running an exact replica of the, his 1952 car. And I want you to notice up here, he was so tall that the factory windshield wasn't getting the job done. He was getting bugs in his face and dust and dirt and pebbles. So he asked them to quickly fabricate this other windshield, the Fitch windshield, so that he would have more protection in the open car. And as I mentioned before, this is an exact replica of his 52 car, including a real engine that was built by, by my pal, Bonneville Bob Cerna, whom I've talked about before. Okay, next one. The large gentleman there, shaking hands with John Fitch is the legendary Alfred Neubauer who ran the Mercedes-Benz factory team for years and years and was one of the most feared men in motorsports because he got his way a lot. Okay, next one, please. Okay. Uh, after that time, Fitch was a professional racing driver and he hired himself out to just about anybody who wanted to have him. He's the one on the far left, tallest in the group. And over there on the right, in all white, you'll see the late Sterling Moss who only died a, a few days ago at the age of 90. And Sterling Moss has his left arm around Juan Manuel Fangio. That was an awesome team. So in 1953, Fitch won the 12 hours of Sebring in a Cunningham C4R, the first Sebring victory for an American driver in an American car ever. Fitch was named Sports Car Driver of the Year by Speed Age Magazine. Okay, next, Mike, thank you. Now these, this next series will show you a few of the things that he was doing in the middle of 50s. In 1954, he raced a Cunningham C4R and a Cunningham C5R, a Sunbeam Talbot, a Porsche 356. He raced at the Mille Emilia in a Nash Healy. He raced a Cooper Monaco. He raced at the RAC Tourist Trophy race in Ireland in a Fraser Nash. He raced an HWM Alpha at Monza and took his rookie test for the Indy 500 in a Curtis Craft Offenhauser. Fitch survived a 140 mile an hour end over end crash during the 12 hours of Reims in France. Okay, Mike, you can click on through. These are some, there's Sterling Moss again, uh, standing to his immediate left. Okay, next one. This is, I think this is from the Tourist Trophy race in Ireland, which is a big hill climb. Here he is back in a Mercedes. This may have been 
uh, one of the European continent races. It wasn't the Mille Miglia, and it was, as far as I could find out, it wasn't the 24 Hours of Le Mans either. This, we had trouble trying to figure out where this is, but it could have been the Targa Florio in uh, Sicily. That's him leading in that car, which I think is number 306. Okay. So certainly, certainly not so flat. No. Uh, you can see here, that's him. And he's looks like he's had a little mechanical trouble there with the right rear of the car. Um, but he finished anyway. And the next one. That they raced with the spare tire in the car. Sure, that was the rules. You had to have a second seat for a real passenger that a real passenger could sit in and you had to carry a spare. But you didn't need the fender. <laughs> Even if you didn't have a fender, you still had to carry a spare. And most of them carried two spares. Okay, next one. Okay. This is that same car from the, the undamaged side at the same event. I, I'm, I tried to find out exactly where some of these photos came from, but uh, they were kind of lost to history. That there in the white helmet is the late Sterling Moss who died last week and John with his pipe in the background. And I don't really know who that other fellow is, but it looks like Sterling is pissed off about something. Okay. Now, in 1955, he signed on with Mercedes-Benz to race that very car, a perfectly stock Mercedes Gullwing. Uh, does everybody understand how they do the numbers at, at uh, the Mille Miglia? No. That's the time of day. He actually left the starting stand at 4.17 in the morning. <laughs> That's how they numbered the cars, was by your starting time, one minute apart. So at the Amelia Amelia, the, they, when they line up, they line up bumper to bumper for blocks. Because if you get out of line, they just disqualify you on the spot. You have to be in order. So this is one of the beauty shots. And the next couple are of him in action with the car. For some reason, they were allowed to take the, the bumper off maybe for better cooling, but that's, that's him just blasting through the streets at the Mille Miglia. And again, so in 1955, Fitch raced for the Mercedes-Benz team along Juan, alongside Juan Manuel Fangio, Carl Kling, and Sterling Moss, arguably the most formidable racing team ever dominating all levels of competition from Formula One to diesel engine production cars. Fitch won the Grand Touring class at the Mille Miglia in this stock production Mercedes 300 SL, finishing fifth overall against real race cars behind his teammates Moss and Fangio in their 300 SLRs. And at that event, Moss finished the race in just a tick under 10 hours for 1,000 miles, a 98 mile an hour average. With, and that record has never been equaled any time since. Still holds the record. Wow. And there's a story about uh, Fangio, I'm sorry, a story about Moss in the winning car, which is the famous 722 300 SL Roadster, that uh, his co-driver was a journalist named Dennis Jenkinson. And they got famous because they had the entire route notes on a big roll of what was supposed to have been toilet paper, but it wasn't. It was a roll of, of like adding machine tape. And that was not invented by Dennis Jenkinson or Sterling Moss. That was invented by John Fitch. He gave it to them. He figured out how to do it and he gave it to them. They put it in their car and they won the race. Now, later in 1955, Fitch was paired with Pierre LeVay in a 300 SLR at the 24 hours of Le Mans. 10 minutes before Fitch was to take over the car, 
it went out of control, veered into the crowd, and burst into flames, killing Mr. LeVay and more than 80 spectators in the most catastrophic accident in motorsports history. Mercedes-Benz withdrew from motorsports for the next 44 years. Okay, next uh, 25 and 26. He later he partnered with Moss to win the RAC Tourist Trophy in Northern Ireland. He took ninth in his final World Championship Grand Prix at Monza, driving a Maserati 250F in the Grand Prix of Italy. And these are shots here of Fitch with one of the Cunninghams that he raced. Beautiful cars, American built, American powered, almost always with either a Cadillac overhead valve or Chrysler Hemi engines. Okay, and then he moved Where's into the guy from California, era. wasn't he? Say again. Uh, Briggs Cunningham was the guy from California. Yes. Yeah, he's the one out, the, 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 out on the course the for some reason with another one of his uh, Cunninghams. That that thing you see there on the uh, side of the hood. Nobody else ever dreamed this. That, that is an engine cooler from a helicopter that had spun at very high volumes. And they decided that they were going to need that as an external oil cooler. And it made the car look kind of stupid, but it really worked. <laughs> okay, next one. We move into a whole other era. He uh, partnered with Chevrolet to get the Corvette V8 launched in racing in 1956. Up until that time, they only had six cylinder engines in them. This, the team that he put together set a class land speed record for production cars at Daytona Beach of 145.543 miles an hour, followed by two class wins and a team win at Sebring. He was both the team manager and the driver for the Corvette SS at the 1957 12 Hours of Hebrew. Okay, next. This, this is one of the ones that was not in production, obviously. That, that was one of the SS cars that they built with the, the head sharing and the big fin. Okay. Now, he left Chevrolet in the middle 1950s. He went, he was uh, asked to put together a design for a racetrack. And that racetrack is Lime Rock in Connecticut. He designed it, he supervised the construction of the track and he only lived about a mile away from the front gate. It was uh, as convenient as could be. And they made a pact with the local church that they would never, ever race on a Sunday. To this day, that track has never held a racing event on a Sunday at Lime Rock. That's just part of the deal. And this is John, um, ah, okay. Let me tell, let's go back to that one. I just want to run through some of his later uh, racing exploits. He'd begun racing Maseratis in 1958, mostly at the new Lime Rock Park. 1959, he drove a factory Porsche 718 RSK in the 12 hours of Sebring, second in class and fifth overall. He continued to race with Cunningham in a Jaguar D-Type and a Lister Jaguar, along with the Stingray racer for Chevrolet's Bill Mitchell and the Cooper Monaco. In 1960, Fitch rejoined the Cunningham team to race Corvettes at Le Mans. The Cunningham prep Corvettes placed first in Grand Touring class and eighth overall at Le Mans, a record that stood for over 40 years. Fitch and Cunningham teamed up to race a Maserati at Sebring and Road America through 1961 and a Jaguar E-Type at Sebring in 62 and 63. He returned to Cunningham to drive a Porsche 904 at Sebring and 1965 and 1966, and at Sebring 66, he hung it up. That was his last race. Okay, Mike, next one. So up to now, 
he's a racing driver, highly sought after, highly su su successful professional guy. He stopped doing that and he decided that he wanted to build his own car. He bought a Chevrolet Corvair, took, it complete, or took the body completely off, designed, executed, engineered, and built this car. This is called the Fitch Phoenix. It's a sports car that he designed on the Corvair chassis with plans to go into production, but he was a victim of bad timing. It, just about the time he was ready to start looking around for a production facility, that's when the Clean Air Act and the uh, Highway Safety Act in the middle of the 60s came along and he, he just couldn't do it <coughs> best, so he stopped. Question? Okay. Yeah, comment. Yes, Paul. Uh, my brother-in-law, who was in World War II, he saw that P-51 shoot down that uh, that uh, German jet. He witnessed that. Wow. <laughs> well, I guess in those days, it was really good to have a witness, because when you got back, you had to tell him whether you had any success that day or not, and it's good to have a witness, right? <laughs> well, he did. He saw it. He and some other guys with him. Okay, now we... Hey, Jim, one forward. of these two pictures on the hood uh, spare of tires. this car. Spare, spare tires. Tire. Two spare tires. Yep. Oh, okay. And that that thing was his daily driver for years on end. He just kept it running, kept it running. It was the only one in the world. And it was his car. He built it. So he just drove it all over Connecticut. Now then, in 2003 and again in 2005, John Fitch attempted to break the land speed record for the FGT class at the Bonneville Salt Flats. When he was interviewed, and I think I've told this story before, when he was interviewed by NBC TV's local Salt Lake City out, uh, affiliate by a young lady, he said to her that driving 153 miles an hour on the Salt Flats was nothing because he had driven much faster than that at night in the rain on public roads. So Bonneville presented no challenge at all, even though he was 87 years old at the time. Yeah. Pitch continued to drive in vintage racing events, particularly at Lime Rock, as well as at the, at the modern Mille Miglia, the Goodwood Festival of Speed and the Monterey Historics, along with his pal Sterling Moss. I think we have a picture of Sterling and John, yeah. There they are, that's at Pebble Beach. Now, the end of his career was completely different from the whole rest of it. He was inspired by the sand-filled fuel cans that he had used to protect his own tent from strafing during the war. He looked at it, he thought about it, and he devised the Fitch Barrier System. Every one of you has seen the Fitch Barrier System. Those are those orange barrels, yellow barrels that are full of sand. They're everywhere at construction sites and road construction. John Fitch invented and patented that, that uh, crash system where if you hit it, and he, he tried it dozens of times with all water, all sand, a mixture like a slurry of water and sand, and uh, sand worked the best in terms of crash force attenuation. So that's what he went ahead and patented. And, uh, the people that know about that stuff have estimated that, and this was a while ago, that the number has much uh, improved ever since then, but uh, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has estimated that those barriers have saved as many as 17,000 lives, and that information is 10 years old. He also designed the Fitch compression barrier suited for oval tracks and other such high-speed situations, which was a set of strong plastic cylinders placed between the guardrail and the wall, gently absorbing the vehicle energy without bouncing it back on the track. He designed a Fitch displaceable guardrail 
where more room is available, a guardrail mounted on skids so that it can slide backwards on, in-cap, on impact, gradually capturing the car, but then sliding back to its original position. He also in- engineered the Fitch driver capsule, an easy to install seat incorporating a seat back, which pivots integral with the seat belt in order to reduce the inertial force experienced by the driver. He later invented the uh, driver cap, another driver capsule by anchoring the helmet to the seat back to prevent skull fracture and hyperextension of the neck in a manner similar to the function of the, the device we now call the Hans device. Fitch also developed a waterless engine cooling system which does not require pressurization, a liquid cooled secondary braking system for light trucks, buses, and similar vehicles, and the Fitch fuel catalyst, which inhibits oxidation in both gasoline and diesel fuel. He developed a self-leveling automotive suspension system for which he received several patents, the Salisbury thermal siphon fireplace, which uses waste heat to provide convective heating, and the Fitch cervical spine traction therapy, which allows freedom of movement in bed while continuing to provide tension that relieves disc pressure. Fitch was awarded the Roadside Safety Award in 1998, was inducted into the Corvette Hall of Fame in 2000, the Sebring Hall of Fame in 2002, the Sports Car Club of America Hall of Fame in 2005, the Motorsports Hall of Fame of America in 2007. In 2009, Fitch became the first full-time sports car driver into the New England Auto Racers Hall of Fame. He died in 2012 at the age of 95. And I was, as I said at the beginning, I was honored and privileged to be a personal friend of his in the last dozen years or so of his life. I've been to his house. I've drunk his sheet cheap champagne. I've listened to stories. He has had a barrel of stuff in his living room with a hinge and he opened up the barrel and there were thousands of pictures in there from all over his life. He was a wonderful, wonderful guy. He got uh, basically screwed out of what we now call the safer barrier at racetracks because he invented it first, but the other guys had better lawyers in terms of better patent attorneys. And he was never a rich man. He couldn't afford a squadron of lawyers to go down to Washington and plead his case with the patent people. So he just ate that one and uh, he was happy that the other guys did get the contract and now the safer barrier is at every major racetrack in the United States and it has saved countless lives. But that was his idea first. And that brings me to the end of my presentation. This, This photo that's up here now, was used by a lot of major news organizations uh, when he died uh, as his obituary photo. And those bastards stole that photo from me. That's my picture. I shot that photograph at the Mille Emilia in Italy. Uh, End of diatribe, end of lecture. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Well done. Anybody? Thank you. Thank Thank you, Thank you, Jim. Nice presentation. Very well done. My Very pleasure. well done. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. Very welcome, all. How many people are at this meeting? I see pictures of 13. Is that right? That's what I uh, see. The head count that I see is 13. Yeah, okay, good. 13. Okay, I figured out how to use the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Uh, Where's your your background, Jim? Thank you for being my uh, slide guy. Where's your background, Jim? What's your background behind you? That's Chapman's Bay, which is outside of uh, Cape Town, South Africa. I shot that picture, too. Very pretty. Thank you. It's actually, yeah, I'm sure Jim was, it's actually backwards. It's the, the water is supposed to be here and the beach is supposed to be there, but don't tell anybody. Selected it, it flipped, flopped it. <laughs> I don't know. 
Yeah, Mike knows how to fix that. He helped me out. There's a, uh, a button at the bottom of the uh, uh, virtual background where it says reverse the, uh, the picture. You can do that. Hmm. Okay. Well, that, that brings me to the end of, uh, of what we had in store for this meeting. Uh, we're going to plan to do the uh, cars and coffee in separate locations to try to get on with our cell phones. 8 a.m. Uh, what, what is the date on that, Greg? Put it on our uh, website. The 25th. The 25th. Let's put it on the calendar. Uh, use your cell phone and we'll, we'll have a cup of coffee and we'll walk around each other's cars. On, uh, on this application, uh, Mike? Uh, yeah, it looks like you're using a, uh, some kind of tablet, Bill. Yes. So you'll be able to be able to walk around with it. Uh, for those of us like me who are using uh, laptops, I'll have to put uh, Zoom on my cell phone, and we could we could do it that way. All right. So you'll you'll but send you, us a meeting know, ID. You'll send us a meeting ID and a password. Right. I will not be able to make it since I don't have a cell phone. But I I'll enjoy seeing all your cars again. Well, you know, you could you could join on the. Uh, the, the desktop or the laptop, Al, you move it out to the garage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have enough trouble setting it up in here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can, yeah, you can still join the meeting. It's just, uh, you won't, you'll be in your chair, though, instead of in your driveway, right? Yeah. But you could, hey, Al, you could take yeah. a picture of the car and put it as your background. Yeah, I could do that, I guess. You, know, you could take multiple pictures and keep flipping them. Mike, why don't you show people how to do that? Uh, can you can you share your okay. screen to do that? Let me share my screen. What screen am I going to share? Okay. Gee, that, that that's uh, fish. I want, I want to show a different screen. Start here. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, no. so. No, I see, screen sharing is. I see everybody's video feed. Okay, then let me re restart the screen share. Can you see my screen now? I see your desktop. Your desktop. Your laptop. What? You see your whole laptop. What do you see? Desktop. see all your apps. All your apps. Start okay. Yeah. Good. So, when you go to Zoom, that's not it. Now I'm going to have to do it, I think, a little differently. Upper, hey, uh, Mike? Yes? Upper right-hand corner, there's three dots that say more. Do you have that on your screen? Oh. No. <laughs> um, I think everybody's device is a little different as to what it shows on this yeah, app. <laughs> Here's the front of it, right? Okay, so I am, I am on what what is the Zoom home screen? Can everyone see that? No, 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 no. no. I'm sitting your laptop. No, oh, okay. Let me uh, stop that share and uh, share it. Share that one again. Oh, come on. Screen. Can you see that now? No, thank, thank. you. Laptop. We're seeing your desktop. 
Can I try? Can I try it, Mike? Uh, yeah, go ahead, Greg. Why don't you try it? I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop that down. Stop share. So, Greg, try, try sharing your screen. Well, I know. Um, This is a settings window that I obtained. Um, can you see my 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 uh, blue desktop? Yes. Yeah. So in yeah, the upper, see, upper the settings window. In the upper left hand corner, I'm on the application, but um, here you just have to select virtual background, and this is where uh, it. Now, I'm on an Apple iMac, but if you click the little plus sign over here, you can then add uh, an image and you just find it, you know, on your file, on your, in your apps, you know, in your photo. In your photo. Yeah. So, any, place, um, any place that you want, that you want to Anywhere you have it. And then you can, like, I can select it. I, I have all these I can select and just switch it around, you know. Um, wow, that's pretty neat. By the way, um, this picture here, you see this little uh, thing at the bottom, it says mirror my video. This is where you flip the picture um, mm. back and forth. Thanks for that, Greg. <laughs> uh, but, but it's under virtual background. Now, uh, I noticed that Mike showed me a different area that you can change this. Um, I'm going to stop the screen share, but in my window at the bottom, I can see everybody now in, in the, uh, everybody thing, but at the very bottom where it says mute, stop video, you see, you see those, there's a little up arrow, and you can also choose your vir virtual background from that little up arrow. That's my, uh, that's my end of my, uh, my thing. On an iPad, it's the top of the screen. If you touch the screen, it'll bring up a band at the top. Okay. That's uh, one of the choices. Yeah, they're in different spots. Yeah. yeah. Are you recording this? Because there's something going on that says on my top of my screen that you're, it's recording. Are you recording something? Yes. We, I started recording this meeting uh, to the cloud about 20 seconds after Greg started talking about how to use the website. So, so the, I didn't record it. I should have recorded it, but I guess every individual can also record it and it'll save in their zoom folder. But, you know, now that we have a, Mike had asked me to have a YouTube channel. So I opened up a, uh, M Ben's club YouTube channel. I could upload that video and then we could share it with members that if they wanted to watch the meeting, you know, that weren't. <laughs> Look at Mike, he's got the coronavirus behind him. The coronavirus is attacking. Present. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can do anything with the background and have some fun with them. You know, uh, some of us might feel like this whole thing has put us in jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had three meetings in the last two days and I've had a different background every time. Yeah. Right, right. You, you, can, you can have a lot of fun with the backgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but keep, you got to keep it R-rated. <laughs> well, PG. Okay, guys. Uh, I'll, I'll get a copy of the... Uh, the video to uh, to Greg, and uh, we'll, we'll put a copy of this meeting unless someone objects uh, up on uh, our YouTube channel. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. No objections. That's great. Meeting adjourned. We had a great middle meeting here. Hey, great time. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Greg. Right. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Jim. Great, great presentation. Enjoy it. Good seeing you, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.